Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, this video is meant mostly to be a top 8 of my most favorite card in this new set. Uh, but I think that uh, just, um, just talking about uh, how the set uh, is uh, will be better. Because uh, this is a multicolor set similar to uh, to Ravnica, for example, uh, it has a lot of multicolored cards, and for that reason, I was expecting uh, something uh, good for Pauper at least in uh, multicolor. Um, not only mana fixing, because we already have a lot of good mana fixing in the form of uh, the artifact lands, the tribal lands, also kind of the Cleansing Wildfire package, uh, but uh, um, not really happy about the uh, new Capenna. Uh, I probably was expecting too much, and I'm not seeing anything much relevant. This is special. Well, uh, we should talk about first uh, the lands, I guess, because uh, we have two cycles of uh, uh, dual lands, or maybe, or the first one, the the sucker, the draw cards uh, lands are the color, but the fetch land can fetch for three different kind of pieces of land. Uh, I think that most of them are not good enough, but uh, in limited they are still great. Uh, the first thing uh, is that I don't really want to sacrifice a land. Uh, if it costs 4 mana to just draw a single card. So basically it's a sort of weaker version of uh, the already existing uh, scry lines because you need to tap 4 mana to, uh, to scry 1 with the Strix Eden uh, dual lands. And in late game decks I think I'm more happy to uh, to get more scry than uh, one single draw uh, because if I sacrifice my land to just draw a bad card I'm obviously uh, p pissed a little compared to when I'm able to scry on the bottom uh, two or more bad cards the fetch land problematic thing is uh, the inability to fetch whenever you want, so it makes it just worse compared to the to evolving wise or traumatic expense. Okay, it uh, gets you one life similar to the gain land, but if you play a big color deck and you are already playing a gain land, I think there's no reason to play this fetch land uh, because the gain lands are better for the most part of the of the game because you get to you can uh, you can still have two colors and if you are playing a three colors deck and you are not playing the artifact dual lands due to the presence of Ocalins in wildfire I think you are will be more happier to play the trading lands since you you still you always have a single color and then you are able to select your second color. For that reason, I think that those lands are not playable in Pauper. Uh, regarding uh, the multicolored cards, we have two sets of uh, uh, two cycles of uh, common uh, common cards. The first one is a uh, uh, early game one fixing card with a late game body. So basically, with uh, all uh, of these uh, five or six mana creatures, you are able to uh, exile them by paying two colorless mana and then uh, you are targeting a land and that land uh, just can add uh, one mana of the exiled card so if you exile the bant one you are able to add green white or blue if you exile the jan one you are able to add green red or black etc uh, I think this card, these overcosted creatures aren't uh, near the playable because uh, they cost too much and they don't do anything relevant. Uh, Dragrate Unlimited because 
they are doing bought something in early game and a late game but the, in constructor they're doing nothing for that cost of mana i mean if you want to play an overcosted creature in a, a in a late game deck you already have plenty of good creatures and the new campaign map overcosted uh, uh overcosted creatures are not near uh, the same level i mean we already have Gruma Gambler and Mirror Frozen if you just want to have a body and they don't cost 5 or 6 mana, they cost most time only 1 mana and if you want to play, uh, want to tap uh, 6 mana to play a uh, big creature, you can just play something like Burning Party or Annoyed Altisaur and those they're much better because you probably draw one card at less from those uh, they create a limited because they have a good body, they fix the mana, they maybe have, can add also some good ability, for example manas, vigilance and, and go on, but they're not playable I think. The second cycle is a, a two mana creature cycle and I'm pretty happy about them. Uh, I think two of them are can be cool and are part of my top 8 favorite cards in this set, but I still am still kind of worried about them. Uh, Snoopy New Z, for example, is not uh, really good. I mean, uh, you can uh, play it in something like an aggressive Dimmer track, but splashing blue for something like a, a mono black suicide deck isn't really great. And uh, being able to play it uh, as a free free creature with life and seems also more difficult here because uh, you need something like five different mana cost in your graveyard and in a low on the curve uh, deck, I think five or more mana cost in your graveyard is kind of impossible because you you can't really take your time to uh, to put. To play creatures with a, a higher mana cost or to to play a bunch of fetch land, okay, maybe you can play Evolving Wilds or Ash Barons over Evolving Wilds, but still I think is not, isn't the right choice. Uh, another deck that you it may try it, it can be Dimmer Delver, because you play cards like uh, Snuffhout, Tuxcower, uh, Gruma Gangler and other different mana cost, but still you are trying to fit a 3-3 vanilla creature, a deck that already has something like uh, unexpected fans when it comes to life gain, and this is just a free free creature, and you mostly want to have a life link effect uh, when you are facing burn or an aggro deck, so you do really want to play a uh, creature that dies from Lightning Bolt. Anyway, the card seems kind of cool because it mills you two cards and maybe something in a deck similar to the Pioneer Approach uh, Tribal deck uh, can be good, but probably uh, is kind of playable only in Pioneer Approach, not in a Pauper uh, Demon deck. The second multicolored card that I fitted in my favorite top 8 is Bot Dropper. The reason is that I truly, truly, uh, and tr I truly like uh, uh, the sacrifice decks, and this is just a functional reprint of Mortician Beetle. Well, uh, it doesn't trigger when your opponent sacrifices a creature, but it's still good because you now have fate copies of Mortician Beetle. Basically, uh, um, it costs uh, also a red mana, which is bad, but uh, it can be evasive with thanks to manas in a late game, and uh, I think it's just an extra position beetle. So th the weak part of uh, the sacrifice deck is not it was not having enough copies of big creatures. So basically now you can have an extra big creature, so you, st you can still play Carnal Feeder, Mortician Beetle uh, and cards that creatures 
weak creatures that you want to sacrifice, for example, Mogmore Marshall, which is in red, is, I think, great in sacrifice decks because you can sacrifice three creatures with a single card and putting three counters on a single body dropper or a more than one copy of Mortician Beetles, from my point of view, seems great. Uh, yeah, you uh, don't really have more copies of uh, Chiron Feeder, but if you're playing something like uh, Rakdos Sacrifice, you can then still feed something like uh, Deadly Dispute and Village Rights. So from my point of view, uh, Rakdos Sacrifice could be playable, or at least I try to build something based on that. Um, Another card is Jewel Teeth, which I think is great with uh, the other dispute. Uh, this card is something like Broken Limited, but I'm not sure about uh, Pauper or any other constructed format because it costs the mana uh, and it does nothing relevant. Okay, that's a Vigilance Trample, 3 3 creature for only 3 mana, which I think is kind of broken for a common card, but uh, I don't think there's much many decks that want to fit Jewel Thief. Okay, uh, in Stumpy it seems uh, bad, because as free mana drops you prefer to have Elephant Guide, uh, in Buggles you obviously don't want to play it, uh, I can think only on uh, uh, a uh, ramp deck with Arbor Elf, for example. Um, the thing is, is similar as a free drop to Lano Rigeri. It has a better body, uh, it, but it doesn't generate more than wind mana and it doesn't cycle itself, which is the most troublesome thing. But it fixed the mana, which is great since bonus ornament got a bump X. And if you play something like the BG Rock deck that I played for uh, for a couple of uh, leagues that, that you can also find on my YouTube channel, uh, if uh, I think it's great because I think I've tried something like BG Rock with Arbor Alf, Deadly Dispute, Blood Fountain, and uh, Tucker Marauder. So I can uh, play Jewel Thief not as an alternative to one originally. Maybe, or maybe yes, and then add also Deadly Dispute and Blood Fountain. So we have a lot of artifacts, and for our Green Ramp deck, Affinity has always been a problematic card, a problematic deck, and having the ability to play both Blood Fountain, Deadly Dispute, and Fanger Marauder will be that, uh, mean that this I can basically make, make uh, uh, a GR Metal, uh, Rakdos Metalcraft deck in uh, Bulgari colors. I will not play Cleansing Walker, but Arbor Elf plus Utopia's Pro could be better sometimes because you are able to ramp already on turn 1 and you are able to land at, at 3 drops on turn 2 and go, so go on. Maybe it will be not playable, but I truly want to try it. With the Rots Master, I don't really like the, the, uh, this devil, but uh, since we already talked about uh, Rakdos Sacrifice, maybe it can be good. Because it's a 3 mana aggressive drop uh, that triggers with uh, tokens, and if you're playing a uh, deck with more, more Marshall, maybe you are also able to play something like Rudo Turbot. Since you are maybe you're play, already playing Deadly Dispute, uh, if you're playing Deadly Dispute, you are incentivized to play that Eco Rise Spring, and maybe, deadly, and maybe Experimental Synthesizer. So, why not playing also Cool of Rebirth? And when you play a Cool of Rebirth or Mogul Marshall, Witcher Rot Master is able to deal something like free damage, and that's a lot of damage from a single card, I, get, I think. Anyway. I need to I need to to try to build something before uh, before saying that uh, I have an overall to this little free mana demo. And card that I really think that can be playable is Security Bypass, uh, but not in a first deck 
it can, maybe you think that secret bypass would be playable in a first deck because if you, for example, enchant a niche of Tit power, you can uh, deal something like two or more damage per turn with a single creature while drawing two or more cards, which is wow. Uh, but I think about secret bypass more in decks like Boggles or more heroic. So basically, uh, not bad Boggles because it's not at the same level of curiosity and curiosity probably I would splash blue in Boggles only just for curiosity. Uh, but maybe you can try something like uh, Simish Boggles or Azorius Heroic or even Izzet Heroic with Kilfind, uh, the other Kilfind Devil creature and Satyr Oplit. Uh, I think a big Satyr Oplit or a big Kilfind unblockable that draws me one card whenever it deals combat damage for me is good enough. Um, Okay, the Rox decks are not meant to prolong the game to the late game, uh, but we have good counter spells in blue, good protection spells, and secret bypasses could be good. Probably more in Boggles, since Boggles, uh, okay, it can be a tour for kill deck, uh, but uh, most times uh, if if they don't draw an uh, eternal armor or ancestral max, they do. They don't really do a lot. And security bypass draw you more extra cards, or maybe they. I just need to draw more copies of Alice Pilgrim in Simish in in uh, Celestine Bogos. Do not. Our finest format. Our finest format seems good. I mean, we Pauper burst ball is a playable strategy, so. A reference format seems to fit very well in a deck that tried to um, to to put in the graveyard their the, uh, their cards. And eventually, you can try something like a madness deck or a graveyard on another kind of graveyard based deck with uh, reference format. Uh, the sad part about reference format is that it's the only playable con knives creature, and I mean. I, it's a white creature when uh, usually madness or any other graveyard strategy uh, besides power bully, which are flashbacks, free spells, uh, basically. I mean, but those creature prismatic strands, those are, they don't cost mana when you flashback them. Uh, it's kind of sad because white, uh, besides power bully, what do what do they really have? Uh, but. This card, uh, since we talked about Burst Bully, in my opinion, is good with Sacred, Inf Sacred Cat and the other, uh, the other uh, Lumin Arc Cronarch, something like this. But the other creature that uh, the Non Palace, non -palace Sentinels uh, Bully list uh, is uh, running. So basically, on your turn one, you can play Dragon Inspector. On turn two, Rafael's Informant. And this card, a flashback creature. Uh, Playing a 3 2 that cycle itself and uh, put on the graveyard a creature that you can then uh, play for your graveyard, from my point of view, is good enough in, uh, in that kind uh, of deck. Well, as I said, Madness, uh, uh, I said it because I have in mind uh, the, the Madness, uh, the free mana Madness form, the Arrogant form, if I remember correctly. And uh, something like a 2 5 Rafael's Informant that this card, uh, uh, a 4 4 uh, Worm, uh, to me seems good enough because I'm playing something like a 4 4 creature with a 3, a three 2 creature for only 5 mana. And when I start playing Power, something like this would be maybe not busted, but would be pretty great because the format was uh, more. Uh, more slow compared to the core, the, the present day, and uh, would be putting a lot of power on the battlefield only by turn five. Would be, I mean, amazing. 
Right now, I'm not sure if it would be play viable or if it would be good, but uh, why not try it? I mean, if you don't play it in a competitive deck, at least you can try play it in a forefront deck, and probably that will. Uh, I probably will try to 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 build something for fun, just to play a handsome format, and I think I would be happy enough with uh, uh, the connives from this little white creature. The other two card creature from white, which is kind of weird because white wasn't very really supposed to draw cards until a couple of years ago, is in Spring Overseer. Uh, it's something like a functional reprint of a creature that was print or print in uh, the same deck as Deadly Dispute, but that creature had the same mana cost the same power and uh, constitution but does in the same draw gain life uh, ATB effect but it doesn't have flying so basically it's just an evasive creature in a white deck but I'm not sure in which kind of white deck I want to play Inspiring Overseer because if you're playing Boros you don't want to play Inspiring Overseer I mean Boros Metalcraft with Experimental Synthesizer. Just imagine playing uh, uh, an Inspiring Overseer when uh, you when you exile it with Experimental Synthesizer if you don't have enough mana. You, know, you can't play Experimental Synthesizer on turn three if you uh, if you are not able to play Inspiring Overseer because if you want to play Spring Overseer, you'll probably want to play four copies of it. Science is an evasive creature that cycles itself. So basically, it's something like Glintook or Koske Fisher. But uh, Glintook and Koske Fisher, they rely on Experimental Synthesizer. And uh, okay, maybe you can play it in Arts of Pestilence, I mean the midrange version with Koske Fisher. And that would be great because just imagine having eight flying creatures in a deck that uh, until uh, until the previous expansion had only uh, four copies of Korske Fisher uh, but as a flying finisher and a blocker for spell starter sprite okay it dies to spell starter sprite but you are trading a flying creature that cycled itself with a spell starter sprite and that would be good enough for me um i kind of worried by the low constitution of this card because uh, makeshift ammunition is a main deck card in any red metalcraft deck i mean both affinity and boros uh, with synthesizer uh, sometimes you can also see makeshift munitions uh, in uh, boros bully but it's pretty rare and uh, well uh, makeshift munition is great in uh, uh, when you can also sacrifice your tokens but still, Inspiring Overseer is something that uh, some years ago would be pretty boosted and right now is kind of meh because we have uh, better cards and uh, I mean, it's a flying cantripping creature, it seems weird to not be able to play it, why not try it, uh, uh, maybe in white wing. Finally, we have Bone of Safety. Bone of Safety, in my opinion, is bad or not really great i mean uh, only putting a shell counter on a creature okay there's a scry one is probably not great enough uh, also i'm not sure how it works with uh, with uh, hinahambra because hinahambra arm to, uh, totem armor uh, doesn't really overlap with other uh, or totem armor uh, I'm not sure if uh, my creatures gonna be destroyed if I need to remove both the shield counter and the henna humbra. Uh, I guess you, that you can choose between shield counter and uh, henna humbra, or you are just forced to, to remove the shield counter. Uh, also, other shield counters doesn't overlap over it, but now we are basically able to play uh, more copies of Inhambra and that can be good if there aren't any general addict effect in the format since the weak part about uh, heroic is uh, trying to have a, 
uh, good enough amount uh, of uh, uh, both aggressive spells and uh, so proactive spells and protective spells that are obviously uh, reactive and not proactive and Hiena Hamra was great because it was both a uh, protection and a proactive spell bonus safety can be played in early game uh, so you d don't waste your mana and it puts something like an, a weaker version of Hiena Hamra on their creature uh, because you don't convert the uh, the spell in uh, raw damage, but in something like more selection text to describe one. Okay, you put, are playing heroic creatures, so whenever you target your creature with a spell, you are putting on one one counter on it. But you are also playing a deck with Ethereal Armor, and Yana Hambra gives plus one plus one and first strike also on the creature. So Yana Hambra, an aggressive deck such as Monolith Heroic, is obviously better. But Bone of Safety can be eventually be playable. Especially if you don't want to play Chumana's Blessing or Benevolent Blessing, signs are too mana cost spells. And they just don't give anything beside protection from a color to the creature. Especially if you don't target a Laguna Tribe Blazer or a Corona Skyguard. I think, uh, I prefer, anyway, I think that I prefer. I still prefer Carmetra's Blessing and similar spell signs. They, uh, they also give plus two plus two on uh, on the creature. Uh, but and Carmetra's Blessing, if the creature has already an enchantment on it, uh, uh, it gives indestructible on the creature. Uh, but Bone of Safety may be playable in uh, two or three copies in a Reich. Probably not in four copies, so since it doesn't really do anything other than trying to counter a uh, removal spell, but is still playable, in my opinion. Not great, but still playable. Okay, guys, that, uh, that's all for today. Uh, next week, I'll upload a league with uh, uh, Simone Reale, which top hated in Pauper Gedon Milan with It's the Ferris. So, we are playing his deck, It's the Ferris for a league. Uh, that would be really cool because uh, it's an easy first list with six copies of ninjas, three copies of Moon Circuit Attacker, and three copies of Ninja TT Powers. And I think that Moon Circuit is a really fun card to play. Uh, I also upload uh, the replay from Twitch in which I play the uh, Extron. So, see ya for the next video.